Africa, a vast and resource-rich continent with a large population, has long faced persistent poverty due to a complex blend of factors. These include geographical challenges, historical exploitation by colonial powers, and economic mismanagement. These issues have collectively hindered sustainable development and contributed to ongoing economic struggles across the continent. In this video, we explore a range of topics critical to understanding Africa's socioeconomic landscape. We begin with an overview of poverty across the continent, then identify the European nations responsible for colonial legacies that still impact Africa today. The discussion extends to the complexity of African economies, incorporating both geographic and historical challenges, and the persistent obstacles created by political instability and corruption. We also assess the role of natural resources and the phenomenon of brain drain, where skilled workers leave for better opportunities abroad. Additionally, we examine how the BRICS nations could potentially assist Africa in overcoming poverty. Africa remains the poorest continent globally with a significant population living on less than $1 a day. Despite some improvements in multidimensional poverty, which looks at factors beyond mere income, 534 million people in sub-Saharan Africa continue to live in poverty. These issues are exacerbated by inadequate health care, education, and high debt levels, particularly in East Africa, where economic disparities are stark and the impacts of COVID-19 have deepened these divides. The income disparity between Africa and developed countries is also significant and growing. While poverty rates have somewhat declined, the absolute number of people living in poverty has increased, with the continent housing the majority of the world's poorest, according to recent World Bank reports. This is partly due to population growth outpacing economic improvements. Moreover, regional economic growth in sub-Saharan Africa has slowed, projected at only 2.5% in 2023, hindered by conflict, climate change, and global economic uncertainties. About 462 million people in the region were living in extreme poverty in 2023. The challenges are multifaceted, including high debt burdens and insufficient job creation relative to the fast-growing working-age population, which exacerbates the poverty situation. The legacies of colonialism continue to profoundly impact the political and economic landscapes of African nations. Colonial powers drew arbitrary borders without regard for the ethnic and cultural divisions existing within Africa, which has led to enduring conflicts and governance challenges. This haphazard approach to boundary creation during colonial times often split ethnic groups across two or more countries, contributing to ongoing conflicts and political instability today. Before we continue, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button to support us. We'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments. It really helps us grow and reach a wider audience. The Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85, where no African representatives were present, allowed European nations to partition the continent into colonies, disregarding the social and tribal boundaries that had existed for centuries. This has resulted in a legacy of divided communities and states of convenience, where the coherence of nation states is often undermined by the artificial nature of their borders. Many current African nations consist of disparate groups that were historically distinct and separate. These colonial borders have not only fostered political instability, but also economic disparities, as the colonial economic policies were primarily extractive. The focus was on extracting resources for the benefit of the colonizer, rather than developing sustainable local economies. This has left a legacy of economic structures that are not conducive to intra-African trade or diversified development which are crucial for economic stability and growth. Efforts to address the consequences of colonialism must include a re-evaluation of these inherited borders and governance structures, possibly rethinking them in a way that better reflects the continent's indigenous cultural and ethnic landscapes. Such changes would be complex and require broad consensus and sensitive negotiation, both domestically within countries and internationally. The colonization of Africa, also known as the Scramble for Africa, was orchestrated by several European powers. These colonizers, each with their unique strategies and motivations, left an indelible mark on the continent. Let's take a closer look. Britain's colonial reach extended over vast areas of Africa, including Egypt, Sudan, Uganda, Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria. The British approach was primarily focused on resource exploitation. They established control through indirect rule which involved utilizing local leaders to govern on behalf of Britain. This method, while less disruptive, still resulted in a significant cultural and economic impact. 
France's colonial territories included Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, and parts of West and Central Africa like Mali, Ivory Coast, and the Congo. The French opted for direct rule, imposing French culture and systems of governance on the colonized territories. This had far-reaching implications on the socio-cultural fabric of these regions. Under King Leopold II, Belgium notoriously controlled the Congo Free State as a private enterprise. Horrific abuses and exploitation occurred here, especially in the rubber and ivory industries, leaving a scar on the region that is still visible today. German colonies included Namibia, Tanzania, Cameroon, and Togo. German rule was characterized by harsh punitive measures and exploitation, especially in Namibia where the Herero and Namaqua genocide took place. Portugal's African colonies included Angola and Mozambique. The Portuguese strategy was marked by settlement and resource extraction, with significant cultural and racial integration compared to other colonizers. Italy controlled parts of Somalia, Libya, and briefly Ethiopia. Italian colonial endeavors were driven by Mussolini's ambition to revive Roman grandeur, marking their late entry into the colonial game. Spain's lesser-known colonial presence in Africa included territories in the north like Western Sahara and Equatorial Guinea. By the early 20th century, these European powers controlled almost 90% of the African continent, with only Ethiopia and Liberia remaining independent. The arbitrary borders drawn by colonizers, often ignorant of cultural and ethnic landscapes, have left a legacy of political and social strife that continues to affect the governance and stability of African nations today. The economic landscape of Africa is a tapestry of complexity, with 54 countries each exhibiting unique economic profiles, development levels, and challenges. This diversity is crucial when considering economic policies and development strategies for the continent. Each African country presents a distinct set of economic conditions, influenced by various factors including geography, historical trade relationships, political stability, and resource availability. For instance, while some countries in North Africa are closely integrated into Mediterranean and European market structures, sub-Saharan countries often face different economic dynamics driven by varying degrees of resource wealth and agricultural bases. The continent's economic activities are spread across different sectors, with significant variance in sectoral development and contribution to GDP. Agriculture remains a substantial part of many African economies but is gradually being complemented by the services sector, which has shown growth and is increasingly contributing to job creation across the continent. Economic growth rates in Africa vary widely. Some nations have experienced rapid growth while others have struggled with economic contraction. Factors such as global economic conditions, internal conflicts, and the recent COVID-19 pandemic have affected these growth patterns. Generally, the African economy is resilient but faces challenges from external debt pressures, climate change, and infrastructural deficits. Trade patterns within Africa contrast sharply with those outside the continent. Intra-African trade is relatively low compared to Africa's trade with other global regions, reflecting both logistical challenges and tariff barriers. The African Continental Free Trade Area aims to address these issues by promoting better integration and reducing trade barriers within the continent which could foster more balanced economic growth across regions. Rapid urbanization and a burgeoning working age population present both challenges and opportunities for Africa. Urban centers are expanding faster than in any other region, which necessitates significant investment in infrastructure and services to support this growth. Moreover, harnessing the potential of its young labor force through education and skill development is critical for sustainable economic growth. It's clear that the economic future of Africa is intertwined with its colonial past, and understanding these complexities is key to navigating the continent's path forward. Africa's diverse economic landscape is marked by numerous geographic and historical challenges, with the Sahara Desert playing a significant role. Spanning across much of North Africa, the Sahara, the world's largest hot desert, presents significant barriers that have historically isolated regions and hindered trade and interaction with global economic hubs. The Sahara Desert, characterized by vast expanses of sand, rock, and sparse vegetation, has always been a formidable barrier to cross. Despite these harsh conditions, trade routes developed around 300 BCE, primarily due to the introduction of camels, which are well suited to the arid environment. These routes, carrying key trade goods like gold from West Africa and salt from the Sahara, peaked in activity from the 12th to 15th centuries, 
but have since declined due to modern transportation methods and political instability in the region. Today, the desert's vast size and difficult terrain continue to pose significant obstacles to modern infrastructure development, such as roads and railways, crucial for facilitating intra-African trade and integration into the global economy. Efforts to overcome these geographic barriers are paramount for economic development, particularly in light of initiatives like the African Continental Free Trade Area, which aims to enhance trade and economic integration across the continent. Beyond the Sahara, persistent poverty remains a widespread issue across Africa's 54 nations. Even in relatively better-off regions like Seychelles and Mauritius, economic instabilities persist. The United Nations Development Program's 2023 report on Africa emphasizes the uneven progress towards Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, across different African regions, stressing the need for accelerated action to meet these goals amidst the ongoing global economic and health crises. In conclusion, understanding the geographic and economic complexities of the Sahara and the systemic poverty across the continent is essential for addressing the developmental challenges faced by the countries within and surrounding it. As we navigate through the intricate tapestry of Africa's economic landscape, it's impossible to ignore the paradox that exists in its vast natural resource wealth. Despite being home to 30% of the world's mineral reserves, including oil, gold, diamonds, and uranium, Africa continues to grapple with economic instability, a phenomenon often referred to as the resource curse. The resource curse, a term coined by economists, describes the paradoxical situation where countries with an abundance of natural resources, instead of prospering, tend to have less economic growth and worse developmental outcomes than countries with fewer resources. This paradox is evident across various African nations, where the wealth derived from these resources hasn't translated into broad-based prosperity, but rather has often led to economic disparities, political corruption, and social unrest. The curse manifests itself in several ways. First, corruption becomes rampant as the wealth generated from natural resources isn't well regulated or equitably distributed, leading to a concentration of wealth in the hands of a few. Second, economic development is stymied as other sectors remain underdeveloped, while the lucrative resource sectors attract all the investment. Lastly, the control of these resources often sparks political instability and conflict. However, the resource curse is not inevitable. It is possible to reverse this trend through improved governance and transparency, ensuring that the wealth generated from these resources benefits all citizens and not just a select few. This involves implementing fair and effective regulatory frameworks, strengthening institutions to manage these resources responsibly, and engaging local communities in decision-making processes. Countries like Botswana and Norway serve as successful examples of how effective governance can convert natural resource wealth into sustainable development gains. As we turn the page from the resource curse, we come face to face with another formidable challenge hindering Africa's economic prosperity, political instability, and corruption. These twin scourges cast long shadows over the continent's economic landscape, undermining investor confidence, deterring foreign investments, and disrupting internal economic activities, the lifeblood of sustained economic growth. Political instability, often rearing its head as frequent government turnovers, coups, and conflicts, creates an unpredictable environment that hinders long-term investment and economic planning. The recent coups in Burkina Faso, Guinea, and Mali, for instance, have heightened instability across West Africa, leading to escalating insecurity that threatens to unravel the economic progress made over the past decades. Corruption, on the other hand, is a pervasive ill that drains public resources, decreases the efficiency of government spending, and reduces the effectiveness of aid. It involves the misuse of power for private gain, and while it affects all countries, it is particularly rampant in environments with weak institutions. In Africa, systemic corruption distorts markets and stifles economic growth by discouraging foreign investment and hindering the development of small businesses. However, these challenges are not insurmountable. There are growing calls for systemic reforms to improve governance and curb corruption. These reforms include enhancing the transparency of government operations, strengthening legal systems, and fostering greater civic participation in political processes. Additionally, addressing underlying economic issues such as unemployment and social inequality, which fuel political discontent and instability, is crucial. In essence, creating a stable environment conducive to economic growth requires a concerted effort to tackle political instability and corruption head-on. 
As we continue to explore Africa's complex economic landscape, it becomes evident that overcoming these barriers is integral to the continent's journey towards sustainable development and prosperity. As we delve deeper into the complexities of Africa's economic landscape, we encounter another significant barrier to development, the brain drain phenomenon. This term refers to the mass emigration of highly skilled and educated individuals from Africa to more developed economies in search of better opportunities. Doctors, engineers, teachers, and other professionals leave their home countries driven by the allure of higher wages, superior working conditions, and more stable political environments in the North. This migration of talent depletes Africa's human capital, the very fuel needed for domestic growth and development. The departure of these skilled professionals deprives African nations of potential innovators and crucial skills necessary for economic growth, governance, and the improvement of public services. Particularly, the mass exodus of healthcare professionals has far-reaching implications on the already strained public health systems. However, the effects of this brain drain aren't entirely negative. The remittances sent back home by the African diaspora often surpass foreign aid, providing a crucial source of income for families and communities left behind. There's also the argument that exposure to global networks and practices can benefit African countries if these expatriates return or contribute knowledge and resources from abroad. Mitigation efforts have included promoting policies that encourage temporary migration, where individuals go abroad for education and work, but then return to their home countries to apply their skills. Improving local opportunities through better governance, upgrading living conditions, and offering competitive professional environments are also seen as critical strategies to retain domestic talent. As we continue to explore the African economic landscape, it's clear that managing this brain drain could unlock significant potential for the continent's journey towards sustainable development and prosperity. As we navigate the complexities of Africa's socio-economic landscape, it's important to note that despite the significant historical and current economic challenges, there are considerable opportunities for growth and development on the continent. Drawing valuable insights from the economic transformations witnessed in Asia, African nations can adapt these lessons to their unique contexts. Asia's economic rise was fueled by strategic government policies that supported industrial development, emphasized education, and fostered technological innovation. Such policies played a crucial role in transforming economies like South Korea and Singapore from low-income to high-income countries within a few decades. The key was creating favorable conditions for industrial growth, improving infrastructure, and investing in human capital. For Africa, adapting these lessons involves understanding the peculiar socio-economic and political landscapes of its diverse countries. Ethiopia and Rwanda, for instance, have begun implementing policies inspired by Asia's development model, focusing on sectors like agriculture for Ethiopia and services for Rwanda, which suit their specific developmental needs. Africa shows potential for significant economic development in various sectors. The continent is experiencing a shift from agriculture to services, indicating a structural transformation of its economies. This shift presents opportunities to enhance productivity in the services sector, which has become a major component of GDP in many African countries. Moreover, improving agricultural productivity remains crucial due to the sector's large employment size and economic contribution. Africa's large and young population could be a considerable asset if properly harnessed. The demographic dividend offers a potential boost in labor force, which, if paired with appropriate policies for education and job creation, could replicate the rapid economic growth observed in East Asia from the 1960s to the 1990s. While there are opportunities, significant challenges such as infrastructural deficits, governance issues, and the need for economic diversification must be addressed. African nations need to adopt strategic actions that include not only opening up economies but also creating conducive environments for industrial growth through effective policies and robust governance. As we look towards the future, it's clear that Africa's development could be greatly accelerated by strategic partnerships with global economic powerhouses. One such partnership lies with the BRICS Consortium. BRICS has the potential to play a pivotal role in advancing economic progress across African nations through strategic initiatives that leverage their collective resources and expertise. Firstly, infrastructure development is key. By investing in essential infrastructure like transportation networks and communication systems, BRICS could significantly enhance connectivity across Africa. 
This would not only facilitate easier and cheaper movement of goods and services, but it would also attract foreign direct investments, leading to job creation and the boosting of local economies. Secondly, educational and technological exchange could be transformative. BRICS has the ability to offer scholarships, establish joint educational programs, and facilitate technology transfers. This would help build a skilled workforce in Africa, driving innovation and supporting industrial diversification. Collaboration in research and development could spur advancements tailored to the specific needs and challenges of the African continent. Thirdly, trade and investment could be a game changer. By promoting and investing in trade within Africa, particularly by supporting the African Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, BRICS nations could help integrate African economies into the global market more effectively. This would reduce trade costs, open up new markets for African exports, and enhance economic resilience against global shocks. Lastly, sustainable development projects could address critical issues like renewable energy, water scarcity, and climate adaptation. By leveraging Africa's abundant natural resources responsibly, these initiatives could ensure long-term sustainability while fostering economic growth. Through these strategies, BRICS could significantly impact Africa's path toward enhanced economic stability, growth, and integration into the global economy. This mutually beneficial relationship aligns not only with global sustainability goals, but also with the economic interests of both African nations and BRICS countries. As we wrap up the video, if you found the content insightful, please show your support by hitting the like button. Your engagement helps us tremendously. Also, don't hesitate to share your views in the comments section. It's invaluable for us as we strive to refine our content and expand our reach. Sharing this video with others is another fantastic way to support our channel and helps bring these discussions to a broader audience. Thank you for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more insightful content like this.